Hello folks and welcome. So Kboom2 2310. The newest version of the KDE Plasma 527.8. Hot off the press as of October of 2023. This uses a 6.5 series kernel. You can probably see my hardware there. So I'm going to give you a tour. Talk a little bit about uh, software and um, just generally walking through the menus to let you see what it's like. And I'll walk, brief you, uh, briefly take you over to another site to explain Kubuntu a little bit if you don't know too much about it and uh, what's new. Uh, so I'll welcome folks. I am filming in 1920 by 1080. This thing looks very nice in 4K, but I thought I'd spare you the smaller icons. So filming in 1920 by 1080, you can adjust your YouTube player accordingly since some of them default to 460 and it's happened to me many times. Things don't look very nice in 460 when someone films in 1920 by 1080. So you may want to investigate that. Things don't look right to you. All right, so before I get cracking, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, one thing and then I'll continue. So if you see this, this is embedded into the photo. Uh, this is the coastline of Oregon, if you're curious, Oregon, USA. If you do not see that um, circle down here in the bottom, you're not on my official channel. I have a full explanation in my community tab about this. But more importantly, if you want to subscribe to Linux for Seniors, look for that logo down here and click it and subscribe. So don't subscribe here. This is just an embedded uh, thing up here. But again, if you don't see that logo, you're not on my official YouTube site. You're watching it somewhere else on somebody else's YouTube site. Anyways, I'm going to continue now. So um, let's talk a little bit about the uh, distribution itself, if you're not too familiar with it. So I'm going to go full screen and uh, I'll enlarge that for you a little bit. So on 10.17, there was an update. That is today. And I'll get rid of that commercial here. I'll try to. Um, so anyways, this is DistroWatch. I do not use the popularity factor at all. However, I do like their layouts. I don't like their commercials, but that goes with uh, the territory, as one would say. But I do like the layout, so it explains about the system. So Kubuntu is Debian and Ubuntu-based Linux distribution out of the Isle of Man. And you can look that up if you're not too curious. I mean, if you're not too sure where that is in the world. Uh, but they only offer one um, desktop. That's the Plasma, KDE Plasma desktop. However, they do offer a live medium. And if you decide to try it out, my suggestion is to go and download that and give it a try. Now, this is not a lightweight distribution. All right. So, but a lot of times I will also make mention of this on also previous videos. You know, it's always a good idea to try stuff. You know, if it doesn't perform well for you, it's too sluggish, it doesn't install, then you, at least you know. So, kbuntu.org, nonprofit. All right, and you can uh, find the download link here one more time with the website. K U B U N T U, N T U, excuse me, dot org. All right, I'm going to pull that back down. So, again, you have. Um, Actually, let me make this larger. Sorry. You have the live medium, so you can go test drive that. See if your network card works. See if all the other goodies work. All right. So in either case, another commercial. Um, give that a try. All right. So I'm going to go backwards and talk about Plasma 527.8 complete change log. I will make this larger for you on the fly. What exactly am I doing? All right, so first of all, if you've never seen any of my videos, I mostly use USB-based computer mice or hardwired with scroll wheels on them and standard keyboard. I hold down the control key while scrolling backwards and forwards. This, by the way, will go through 30% on a Firefox web browser and all the way up to 500. I think Chromium, I think I, I want to say it's 25 to 500, but it's plenty big. All right, let me get cracking here. Plasma 527.8. So I'm not really going to read all this stuff, but more importantly, if you are curious about where this information is, you can read the kde.org announcements for uh, change locks. But I'm just going to briefly go over this. Okay, and then you can read, um, read about the commit statements. 
again, I'm going to try to sc scroll over this fairly slow. And more importantly, my all my videos have timelines and chapters. Okay. All the tabs are open. So quite a few things on the Plasma workspace. You know, some folks may be interested in one or two items. And some folks um, may not be familiar with, um, well, this distribution at all. That's why I brought up DistroWatch earlier. Okay, let's take a peek at the system. So we are going to start with uh, quick settings. You have your appearance thing. All right, so we have the standard Kubuntu layout. It's what you've been looking at. We have some other themes in here too. Application styles, plasma styles, colors, window decorations, fonts. You can increase that if you don't like the size and uh, icon sets. Okay, it's currently using the breeze icon set. You can see some of the other ones in here. So why do I go through some of this stuff? Because a lot of the other Plasma desktops may have some changes in theirs. That's why I do this. You can certainly get new cursors. I also have videos on how to install these things manually. But I'm using the Oxygen Blue today. All right, so splash screen and font management is also over here. So the workspace behavior is set for double click. That is my preferred on everything. All right, just as an FYI, that's default. Lots of little things are in here. Filming in 1920 by 1080. You can see my video card and graphics card goes up to 4K. So is my monitor. Thought I'd spare you the smaller icons though. But it looks very nice in 4K. So. One more time, this is 527.8, the latest version of the KDE Plasma. Let's go take a peek at the software for a second. Discover Software Center. So your updater is up here, and you will see that icon just populate on your panel also. But uh, this is uh, 527.8, and where's the stuff coming from? I'm going full screen. So um, this is where the stuff is coming from. Mantic, Debian Mantic, interesting name, huh? All right, so if you need some flat pack software, um, the flat pack back end is not installed by default. So you can install that. A lot of folks like flat pack software, a lot of distributions support flat pack software. It's over 30 different distributions or distros that support flat pack software. Flat pack software also runs in sandbox environments, isolated from your systems. That's a, a large appeal with some. Anyways, folks, clicking through the applications, you can see all the stuff and I'll reduce this in size. All I'm doing is clicking and holding while pulling that up and pulling that back. You can also double click or you can do it the old fashioned way. The footprint of this is too small for me to click on. Uh, but anyways, let's say you're interested in something in here. You click that and you know, you do the install thing. If you're in this mode, you may see two of these. There's install here and install there. And you can read all about it as one would say. Okay, so click that and go find your software. Sometimes system profiler and benchmark people like. Uh, that's for you know listing out your graphical you know, system information. Very similar to what I showed you earlier from here. Except it's a lot more detailed than this area here. If you're um, maybe looking for um, something similar to Photoshop, I use this pretty heavily. It's uh, GIMP. GNU Image Manipulation Program. A funny name, however, um, it is a pretty nice application. Can be a learning curve for some folks, but uh, more importantly, I use it heavily. My previous channel had 450 videos, and I used to use GIMP on that also for the thumbnails there. And my current channel, I think, is in the 240 range right now. Also got games to think about. So I'm going to clear the field so I can uh, get rid of this stuff. But more importantly, we have some games you can play with. You got your install categories in here, too. If you need to get a, you know, you're looking for something in a hurry to get rid of. All right. Enough about the software manager. Now you know where the stuff is coming from. 
your uh, file manager is Dolphin. I will just click the home folder and uh, give you a couple of tips in here. You can double click on these things. You can also click and hold and pull down as long as you're away from that top line right there. This is probably a bad example. I usually, I usually use a yellow pointer for this, but there, I'm talking about the top of the window. You want to leave your pointer tip away from there to be able to do stuff like this or double clicking. I'm not clicking on any icons. All right, resizing icons, do it this way. You can also hold down the control key, and if it stops, let go of the control key, press it down again, and then scroll back and forth on your computer mouse. I'm not touching, talking about touchpads. Okay? All right, well, I'm not really going to get into all the details of the file manager. Let's go through the menus. So K-Tester is the name of my, my user for today. We got a nice search field and what, what else can we do if we're just on the screen? Just start typing. K-Runner is running in the background. I was looking for calendar and it's already highlighted. Sorry, calculator, not calendar. All right, same deal. I can just double click if I want that large or pull down to make it smaller. Um, another tip for you, if you need to know another option for closing that, instead of uh, clicking that, you can just use Alt and F4. That works with closing anything, pretty much. All right, so um, I already talked about KRunner now. You can also do searches in here. Um, you, I'm going to skip over all, and so that's what's in your favorites. Firefox web browser, you can install others. Here's your software center system settings you also have another shortcut of it downstairs and also the same thing with this disk discover center you also have dolphin here and here and also firefox in both locations there's your console terminal box and kate is a text editor moving along to kate and uh, there it does have four games installed it can of course install others um, you can of course add the gimp uh, to uh, you know if you're wanting to have something similar to Photoshop, all right, look for that in the Discover Software Center. Adding an extra web browser, maybe. But these are the tools and toys that come installed. So you got an email client here and the Firefox, just as an example. I added Simple Screen so I can bring you this video, and I also added VLC. But this is your default media player, Haruna. All right. I prefer that one, but that's just me. All right, LibreOffice Writer. Let's go see what version of this is. So if you are the type of person that likes to save files in Microsoft formats and uh, you're looking for 2010, this will do that. This is 7.62.1. So I'm gonna do a save as in other words, and let you see the file formats. So the previous version, um, I, like a 7.4, for instance, or even 7.5, would not allow you to save it in uh, Word 2010, 365. The highest it went was uh, 2007. But it does have other templates downstairs also. Really old stuff, if you're interested in Microsoft formats. Nice office manager. All right, I'm going to close that now and continue. All right, that's still part of LibreOffice, the math formula editor, okay, because that's a suite. Okay, there's also an ocular document viewer here too. Settings, system, we have console, we have all kinds of toys, system monitor, utilities. Screenshot tool, always nice to have. Standard icons. All right, so when you install this thing, be patient, all right? First of all, the, the hardware detection, when you install, let's say you downloaded that image um, off their website and you burned it onto a DVD or, or USB stick, just be patient. The installer will actually come up and start scanning your system for what kind of hardware components, and then you'll finally get a desktop. And it certainly isn't this wallpaper, but I'll show you a couple of them. But before I actually continue, um, let me just talk about the installer. So it generally you just um, select the items in there, put in your user and password, and then just be patient. Once it uh, fully installs, um, you'll reboot your system and it'll actually tell you to remove the installation media. 
and then allow it to uh, boot up. Now, if you change your mouse cursor like this one, the first time you log out, because that normally when you change mouse cursors, if you've seen any of my videos, I tell you to log out of the system and log back in, if not a reboot. When you log out of your system the first time, okay, just give it, be patient. You'll get a black screen for probably about three seconds, maybe, maybe four. But it will go to a login screen. And then you can log back in after you change your cursor. If you change your themes, sometimes it's actually best to just to do a restart, a re reboot. How is that? Configure wallpapers. So let's go take a peek at uh, some of the ones they have installed. I will resize this my way. So I added this one. And uh, these are the standard wallpapers that you get with the system. The one that comes uh, on boot up is, uh, it looks like mountains. It's this one right here. That's your default. But just thought I'd let you take a peek at that. All right, don't forget if you're, I'm gonna do a discard. Don't forget if you're uh, wanting some icons on your desktop, then you may wanna increase the size to something like jumbo or large. All right, not really gonna make this uh, video about uh, new user experience, but just wanted to give you a quick peek and a couple of tips along the way. So again, if you see this icon in the corner, you can hit subscribe. If you don't see this icon in the corner, you're watching this video on a different channel other than my own. This again is Linux for seniors. Linux is for any age. Thank you for watching.